welcome to the very first Back to the Drawing Board, me, Stephen Lloyd, at the Grand Force Shawco Technical Officers in Leeds. Uh, behind me, my drawing board will help me to explain just how we design our hydraulic props and the kinds of actions and effects that will act upon it. Uh, most of the prop is made of circular hollow sections, which will go on for quite some length. And then at one end of it, we have a hydraulic unit, which gives the prop its adjustment and its inherent pre-stress that's synonymous with hydraulic propping. If you don't know a lot about the hydraulic unit, there should be a link below me to Tony's technical blog and an entry that he made back in 2011, which will tell you all about the basics of hydraulics. Now you know a little bit about hydraulics, we can carry on. And the reason we put these props in the ground in the first place is to hold the earth back to create a safe environment underground for us to work and install the permanent works. So the biggest load we're going to have on our prop are the earth loads. The three main things that will affect the earth loads are going to be how deep you dig. The deeper you go, the more earth you have to hold back and the higher the loads on the props are going to be. How strong the soil is. The sheer strength of the soil is very important. The stronger it is, the more it can hold itself up and the less work we have to do. The weaker it is, the more force we're going to get and the more we have to help hold it back with the props. And the third factor is water. It's difficult to hold back. It's heavy. Generally, you don't like water. The next biggest load we'll have is a thermal load. We have a large lump of steel in the ground here and when it gets warm it wants to expand. Because there's earth on either side it stops it from expanding and it holds it back. So if you imagine allowing it to expand and then pressing it back in again, how much force it would take to compress that prop back to its original length, that's the extra load that you get. So they're axial forces, they act along the prop. We also have some transverse forces that act across the prop. The main one of these is its own self weight. Everything weighs something. This depends on the material, the size of the cross section, the thicker the section is, the more it's going to weigh, and any extra features we've got as well. It's not just a tube, we also have things like flanges, lifting eyes, feet underneath, and of course the hydraulic unit itself weighs quite a lot. Uh, these axial forces can also generate a moment as well. If you apply a force in the middle of a prop, down the middle of an object, it will compress it evenly. But in this case, if we imagine lifting that force up and pressing along the top, even by pressing along the prop, you can help to bend it. This can be mitigated with the swivels at the end, but they can only stop the uh, eccentric moment in the direction of the swivel, in order to stop the eccentric moment in the vertical orientation, where it's going to be the worst case, you have to come up with some uh, neat fixing at the end, like a grout pack or something that will ensure that the force goes concentrically axially down the middle of the prop. There are all the forces that you can account for, but there's always something that you can't account for. Accidental actions can sometimes happen. Um, a load is dropped on the prop, an excavator digging underneath manages to accidentally bump it. There's two ways of dealing with this. The first is to design the prop so it's strong enough that if you did strike it or drop something on top of it, the prop's not going to move anywhere anyway. The second way of doing it is if you did strike that prop and knocked it out completely, would all the other props near it be able to take that extra force and be able to hold up the excavation even without one of those props. Now if you've got a nice straight uh, long excavation with lots of regularly spaced props, it's quite easy to design for loss of prop, that second option. But where you've got a large unusual shaped excavation, it's not always easy to design for every single prop to be able to take the force of its next door neighbour and that can be uneconomical. So quite often we'll prefer the first method where we make our sections a little bit chunkier so that if anything is dropped on it or if anything does strike it the props will always stay in place. Now you can't just throw all of these forces at the prop willy-nilly. In Eurocode 7 it gives us combinations that allow us to calculate the earth load. Design Approach 1 is what we use in the UK and this has two combinations and we'll also check the SLS. In one combination we factor down the strength of the soil, so talking about the shear strength of the soil again. In another combination we factor up structural loads and in the SLS we don't factor anything until the end and we put it all together. Now I take the worst case of these three and apply that to the prop. But then I have to combine that with all of these others, which is where I come over to this side of the board. EN 1990, often referred to as Eurocode 0, it gives us all kinds of combinations of actions and effects and it tells us partial factors to apply to everything. You wouldn't necessarily get a very high temperature load with a very high, let's say, snow load. 
if you've got a high temperature, it's quite unlikely that you'll get snow sat on top of the prop. And so these factors factor everything down to help to make it a more realistic scenario, to make it a little bit more likely. Um, having two loads acting at the same time, that's fairly likely. Having seven different loads, all at their worst case, all at the same time, it's probably never going to happen in our lifetime. You get three flavours of partial factors. Xi, Cusi, Psi, Psi, and the gamma factors. And even those gamma factors come in different flavours. You have a, a permanent action gamma factor, which is usually 1.35, and you have a variable action gamma factor, which is usually 1.5. You also get gamma factors for the materials when you're working out the resistances of the props, which I'll come on to in a minute. So far, we've just talked about actions. Now, these cosi and psi factors, they're all about combinations of load and how they're going to interact with each other. And it helps to create the 95% uh, confidence and to not over-egg your, uh, your design. So talking about all the combinations of actions, I now come on to the resistances. And this is the important bit. All of these actions are trying to break our prop and these resistances are what keep it from breaking. The first thing, the most important thing for the hydraulic unit is we check the actual hydraulic ram itself. There are things happening like the, uh, the axial load on the rod, all of these little rubber fittings and the o-rings and the pins that connect it together. But what usually is the most important, what is usually the critical factor is the yield strength of the cylinder containing the fluid. As you press on here, this fluid gains in pressure and that presses out and wants this ram to bulge out. What we check is the yield strength of the actual cylinder to hold that in. So the hydraulic ram hopefully will stay put. What about the steel? The steel section itself when it's quite short is very strong, a lot stronger than the hydraulic unit, but you eventually get to a point as that steel gets longer and longer and longer, it wants to buckle and it becomes the steel that's the weaker element. You have a little look down here, you see some of these uh, charts, at short lengths, you've got 100% of the strength, it's a good place to be. But as you get longer, that strength drops off until eventually you get to a point where your prop is not nearly enough strength that you want. So you move on to a bigger section. Now a bigger section will start with a higher strength, but it'll also keep that strength for a lot longer and it won't start dropping off with its buckling until a lot later on. So we try and stick to this area of the graph where we've got the high strength of the steel. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an overview on how we design our props. I haven't gone into too much detail. The geotechnical loads, that could be a whole drawing board of its own. Uh, but for now, I hope I've given you enough information and I hope you come back to the drawing board. Thanks very much.